Information items and Dr. Waddell. Thank you, Ms. Gray. Uh, I just want to take a moment, board, uh, and, and for the public. You notice a new look on the agenda, and uh, we've been talking about this for several months now, and we're rolling it out this month. Thought a good time would be in that break we had in July, and give people a chance to kind of get used to doing this, too. But it now is organized around information, discussion, action items. And uh, besides, I think, being simple to look at, uh, I think the real merits behind it is that uh, that's different than uh, previously is that as a board you're going to see items that uh, uh, you'll eventually be asked to act to, to act upon to vote upon but you'll have three months to look at them and the public will have three months uh, to see them as well so we believe it'll be a way to inform you and the public better it'll be more transparent um, and Hopefully, you'll feel like you've been well informed about an item before you're asked to vote on it. Um, this will be the norm for nearly everything we do. However, let me uh, say that there there will occasionally be uh, some items that will come on for information. It's just to inform you of something. There won't be any need for action down the road. So they may only appear uh, for one month just as an informational purpose. Um, again, most things that are that will be listed as information will work its way through a three-month process. Sometimes, too, we, we may have discussion items um, when something has come up that's maybe unexpected or of an emergency nature that we just need to get acted upon, in which case we'll put those on as, as a discussion item and maybe go through two months to shorten that process or even have it on discussion and then to vote. So. However, at any time, if you, if the board chooses, uh, if we're if we're asking for you to perhaps move something a little more quickly, you could say we're not ready yet. Let's follow the three-month process. That's always your discretion. But uh, we hope that this uh, um, will be uh, simple for you to to use. I've already heard a couple of comments, um, but also that um, uh, you will feel well informed before you're asked to take action. Uh, it'll just about any item that you're asked to vote upon, uh, you and the public will have had three months to take a look at it. So we hope that people will appreciate that from the standpoint of, of uh, transparency. So I just wanted to give that just brief yeah. overview. I know we've kind of, uh, this has been kind of a, something that uh, I've shared with you a couple of times before, uh, but this is the first month that we're, we're using that. So it's, so it's a new look. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Waddell. I've already told him that I like the new format. Uh, I feel like I am more informed, and <clears throat> it's I don't have to go and, and search for information. Um, it's all there, and I like the discussion. And um, it, It's there several times, like you said, before we have to take action on it, because a lot of times we have seen it and didn't really have time to analyze it, and that's just been a little too quick. So thank you. The first item under um, information items is Mr. Michael Perry, Louisville High School School Auditorium. Thank you, Mrs. Gregg, uh, Dr. Waddell, members of the board. We have an information item in front of you tonight to consider uh, what we've presented to you as two options for Louisville High School Auditorium. Uh, if you would like, I'd be glad to answer any questions. It is an information item. Uh, will be on the discussion agenda next month. Michael, I have a couple of concerns, um, not concerns, questions, things I would like to see. I would like to see some uh, in-depth research as to how often that auditorium is used by the communities. I don't think it's just the little school community that uses it. Um, and I'll help if I need to. Maybe we need to call those organizations that are using it to find out what their average crowd is. Um, I am concerned about the 850 seats option simply because um, while that is what the other high schools have, we are still the largest high school. We're just spread across three different campuses in Little School. Um, but that is the only auditorium for Louisville High School students, correct? That is correct. So, um, 
And also, is there, like Ms. Chauvin suggested, is there a medium? Is there a, a medium between 850 seats brand new and 1350 seats old and renovated? Maybe we could get a price <laughs> difference on something that is new that's maybe a little bigger? Based on what we find out in our research, I, I don't think <coughs> just asking people how often it's used and how many attend is good. I, and I, I really will help. I'll, I'll get the calendars and help you call the different organizations and get some real, real information because the parking lot's packed. So well, that's a good thing. Yeah. So we, we'd be glad to get that information for you, and we'll research other options for you, this later. Thanks. So are you saying that? The Flower Mound High School and Marcus Auditorium, um, the capacity is 13? Mrs. Gregg, the capacity of those schools is closer to the 850 seats. Oh, that's, uh, that's what I thought I saw. It sounded like, um, so you're saying, okay, that option one would be the 1350 for LHS. And how many students attend, how many Louisville High School students do we have? Nearly 3,000? Right around 3,000? <clears> After <throat> refer to. Dr. Rogers. Um, Ms. Latham, with the ninth graders at three campuses, about 3,500. And how many do we have at Marcus? About 3,200 at both Marcus and at Flower Mountain High School. And Hebron? Uh, about 2,700, 2,800. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. And 2,000 at the college. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, if, if you don't mind, um, we when Mr. Perry brought this to us to, you know, said it's time to start looking at this a, a couple of months back. What was on the books, as far as the auditorium was, was a very minimal renovation of this facility. Um, the bricks didn't match up, could not be matched up, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. And um, uh, there were other problems included. Um, there was going to be very little renovations to the backstage facilities, none to the seating areas. Um, there was not going to be, uh, there was a, a lobby that could not handle the, the volume of people coming in to the auditorium. If you had a full seating, right now what you have is you have the whole hallway of the high school, but that's slated to disappear. So you have a very tiny lobby that would not accommodate a full house, uh, nor would you have sufficient bathroom space. So uh, what Mr. Perry uh, proposed to us is he had, he, had a, he had a consideration that would keep more of the front hallway be converted to a lobby and additional restroom facilities. Um, it still did not address many features of the auditorium. It would give more space for people to come in and hold them prior to performances, but it wouldn't do a lot for other parts of the facility and you still have this this the auditorium that's sitting in front of a brand new school pretty much obscuring the front of the school um, that has not only is it large and obscures it but it's a different color um, and is not attached to the facility therefore going back and forth between the auditorium and the uh, the school and inclement weather could be a problem uh, so he you know what he proposed was was spending more money on this thing to have it to be a better facility to renovate it so there'd be more space, more bathroom facility, and those kinds of things, some additional renovations to the auditorium. But our thought was, thinking about that, if for the same amount of money or similar money that we could have a brand new facility that's attached to the high school that's the same color, um, as similar as the newer high schools and what they currently have, um, would that be a better way to go? And we asked him to pursue that. And, and see what that uh, came to. He asked the architects to do some basic sketches and, and come back with it. We felt like it was compelling enough that we needed to, to share that with you. Um, one of the things that uh, we, we, we kind of let guide us is, is what, trying to keep the cost, what would the cost be of a brand new facility relative to the expansion of bathroom and lobby facilities to kind of keep those in line. I, I think the original, my view is, that the original proposal, the original renovation proposal, was just inadequate. Um, and it, it, you can hardly imagine 1,300 people coming up there and not having a place to 
to wait prior to a performance, uh, especially if you had poor weather, uh, weather like we're having today. Um, and, um, and what about restroom facilities? So that, to me, is just not good use of taxpayer money. Uh, but um, um, when he gave that alternative proposal, um, thought if we looked at something brand new, similar to what Flower Mound and Hebron have, let's compare the costs, and the cost came back similar. And so uh, that's why we wanted to bring this to you. There's, there's really two ways to go at this, but we felt like it was uh, important enough to, to, to get your feedback on this. Um, so we, we really end up something that we're, we're, we're satisfied with as far as Louisville High School is concerned. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I would just like to say that I agree that the renovations were inadequate, but it was what it was. And I am very thankful that um, Dr. Riddell or Michael or whoever came up with the idea um, to fully renovate or build a new uh, auditorium for Louisville. Um, that's phenomenal. I'm just really concerned about the space. I would love to have a brand new attached auditorium huge yes that is connected to the school that has all the new technology and the seats and the uh, dressing rooms I, I love that idea and I'm just really concerned about the CD that's what I'm really concerned with um, so and how do we engage the the public other than we've announced it here we've given some information um you know, we're at the point where we, we, you know, we were prepared to move forward with the renovation as we had. And it's, I don't know if you consider it a change order, it's really not because we haven't begun the construction yet. But, uh, you know, because we're at a point where we could begin the renovation of the building, it's in the plans, it's, it's time that, that uh, you know, we can <clears throat> say we're going to go in a different direction on this. Um, you, you, you could go out and engage them more and, 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 and get more feedback on it. I would just, for, for sake of getting the, the project finished, and how long, Mr. Perry, tell us again how long it would take to, to do the, uh, if, we, if we replaced it with a brand new facility, how long would that take? Yeah, we're, we're anticip Dr. Riddell, we're anticipating a, uh, a June start of next year as soon as students leave the building and a 12-month schedule to complete. So two years. Yes, sir. So part of the problem is the, the extent to which you do additional feedback is, you know, and the impact that has on delaying the construction is the one issue I think is important. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I have a, a bit of concern. It, it, it's not so much with the project, but, you know, back when we had the bond election, there were specific projects that were listed to the public that we needed and these were the things that we were going to do for the district and and I think the integrity of that list has been lost somewhere and and, and I, I I wonder if, if we don't need to go back and do a facilities plan and say these these are the needs this is what it's going to cost and, and and let the people know that you know we're not just saying we're going to spend these tax dollars as how we see fit at the time uh, especially when we told them back at the time of the bond that they would be used for specific items and buildings and programs and and now we just kind of gotten off of that and some way somehow seem to be saying we have a pot of money let's just go use it so I, I would like to see a facilities plan that goes back to that bond issue that says this is what our needs now and, and let the people know That's that we have a, a, a set plan on using their bond monies. Mike, that's exactly why I think we're going to be setting up, uh, we'll be discussing tonight about this facilities and bond oversight committee and things of this sort, so we'll know where we are. And we will be able to get back and see exactly what we told the public, where we stand with that. And so we're leading in that direction because that is on, that's something that we have been talking about. Ms. Kyer? Uh, just with the new format, informational items, from what I understand, we're just supposed to be getting information, and then we'll get the, right. what's more of a discussion next month, and then the right. month after that. So we do have three months in which we're going to be carrying forth with this new agenda, so I was just thinking maybe we should move on. Yeah. 
and just try and keep to the spirit of the new agenda. Anyone else? Yeah. One, one, one more thing. I, I just believe this item we ought to be put on the agenda after that a facilities plan is, is brought to us. So we have an organized plan as opposed to uh, what we do here. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Perry, you're up next for the uh, new construction report. Yes, it's a good thing I didn't sit down. <laughs> so good, good news. Let me, let me share with you some great news. Uh, let's start with uh, Marcus High School. As, as many of you remember, we had an awful flood out there that destroyed a gym floor. Uh, this morning, we are back in business at Marcus Gym, uh, ready for basketball. Oh, good. So that is a, it's a good thing to have that one behind us. Let's hope that never happens again. Uh, Louisville High School uh, had an opportunity to, to meet with the contractor today, and there's still some dust and some dirt that needs to be cleaned up, but overall, the building is looking very, very good. Uh, we are on track to open the gymnasium, the main arena gymnasium, uh, August 22nd. We may be one or two days late because of that rain in June, on June 21st where we had about three inches of rain and all of that hail and storm. We may not open the competition gyms until August 24th. We're working with campus staff and trying to improve on that day. Uh, however, we have green tags from the city uh, and we are moving teachers in. If you recall, we renovated the west wing of that as well. Uh, we're moving teachers and furniture back in there. We received new furniture for the new part of the building today. So we're on track and that building looks fantastic. Uh, we think those, those two were very tough when we moved to Forestwood Middle School, which was even tougher this summer. Seven weeks, an extensive renovation to Forestwood Middle School. We received our green tags out there. We have moved staff back in. Faculty administration started today. We moved teachers back in this, uh, this Thursday and Friday. So uh, we're looking very good for the opening of school. We had a very, very short summer. I keep joking about moving the start of school, but nobody will take me seriously. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. This next one, um, 